Welcome to Behind the Ballot, one-on-one -on -one candidate interviews. I'm delighted to welcome Miriam Monsef to the studio today. Miriam is the Liberal Party candidate, so it's great to have you back here. It's my pleasure. So this is your first visit to our new set, and uh, you've been a guest on Politically Speaking in the past, and, uh, and you've been in the studio actually doing a candidate's meeting, so uh, familiar territory for you, but we're really glad to have you here in the new context. Thank you, and the new context smells like fresh paint. The, and and yes, it's I all, like it. <laughs> it's all new, and we're, we're delighted with, uh, with our new, as you'll know, because I keep going on about it, we really <laughs> like our new space here for behind the ballot, and that uh, sort of takes over the space uh, for the next little while here. So Miriam, we're um, basically interviewing all candidates just to learn a little bit more about them maybe hearing some things we might all, not always hear on the campaign trail and some things we hear on the campaign trail but I want to start off just asking you to tell us a little bit, bit about yourself your background and how you arrived to be a candidate for Peterborough and Kawartha. The whole story eh, Well I'll just start and I'll cut you off if it, <laughs> if it goes on too long. <laughs> uh, okay so my Canadian story begins about 20 years ago when uh, my mom, my two sisters and I arrived here in Peterborough as refugees and the desire to serve this community really begins there because it was the people and the organizations here in Peterborough that showed great support and kindness to my family and I, helped us learn the language, set up a home and the various safety nets and the education systems that we have here have allowed me to be standing or sitting here right now and running as your next liberal candidate. I had the great privilege of going to PCBS and the arts I program I was hoping you'd mention that, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I had a wonderful opportunity, a transformative learning experience at Trent University. It's been this community that's let me start my own business, start a social enterprise, go and represent Peterborough at the United Nations and at the core of why I'm doing what I'm doing is the desire to give back and to repay that kindness but also the genuine belief that in this country and in a community as rich as ours we can do better. Tell us a bit more, you mentioned the United Nations, so t tell us a bit more about what your experience was there and, uh, and how that ties into being a political candidate. In 2013, I applied for a grant and received funding to go to New York uh, at the uh, Commission on the Status of Women Summit that happens every year. And this particular year, the focus was ending violence against women and girls. And there I was met with hundreds of other advocates from around the world who were there for various reasons all with the common goal of making things better for women and girls because when you make things better for women and girls you've enhanced communities and so part of how that relates to my work as a politician is that was all about advocacy about hearing what the rest of the world is doing hearing about what's not working learning about best practices and recognizing where Canada shines and where we need to do better and that experience really affected me because it made me proud that we are a country with progressive policies and tools like the Charter of Rights and Freedoms but it also made me more motivated to move us forward around things like making sure that our women and girls are not dealing with as much violence. Our First Nations have the basic rights uh, that the rest of us enjoy as well. And so that was a pivotal experience for me. So that, and that was in 2013. Uh, is there any other experience in your life or job that you've uh, been involved with that has inspired you to, to get involved? To get involved politically? Politically, like, yeah. Because the the work experience that I've had, my employment history, has definitely contributed to this, as has my volunteer experience. My work experience, I've had the good fortune of working with so many different organizations and institutions, Trent University, Fleming College, the Community Foundation, New Canadian Centre, running my own business in the Kawarthas. Uh, all those experiences allowed me the opportunity to understand front lines, what's going on in this community, who's doing what, where the needs are, and where the opportunities for growth and collaboration are. And with my volunteer experiences, over 30 boards and committees like the Vice President of the YWCA, the Red Pashmina campaign, starting and finding funding for a mental health advocacy group at Trent University. 
it's been those volunteer experiences, to be honest with you, that really allowed me to understand that in this country, we have tremendous resources and capacity to do more and to be more, and collectively, all of that has shaped me to be an effective MP. Okay, tell, tell us a bit more about uh, your business experience. You mentioned you, you ran a business. What, uh, what can you tell us about that? I was at Trent University and I was studying and there was a there was an opportunity to be a franchisee with Action Window Cleaners and uh, the opportunity to not just be my own boss but to create job opportunities for other students and also to travel the Kawartha's and I did that for two years on top of doing my studies. Uh, it was the hardest work I've ever done. I climbed 32 foot ladders and cleaned out gutters and 100% guarantee is what our clients received. I had the great privilege of working with 11 other students and learning about what it takes to be an entrepreneur and that work ethic and then understanding the somewhat complicated regulatory system that exists and um, better understanding the climate for entrepreneurship in this community. Uh, so yeah, that, that those, those two years were very memorable and I, some say that when you get to do something like that, it's the equi equivalent of uh, getting your master's in <laughs> business because nothing prepares you for the real world like doing soup to nuts of a business. Right, okay, great. Hey, so uh, why do you feel you would be the best choice to be our next member of parliament? First, it's because, as I mentioned before, my intention for this job, at the core of what I intend to do, is to serve and to give back to a community that's given me so much. And every day when I wake up, and every time when I go to bed, that's going to be top of mind for me. What will make me an effective MP is my ability to listen to listen to a wide variety of opinions from experts and scientists to my caucus colleagues to the people here in this community to genuinely listen so that I know what's going on in my community and how to persuade those in caucus. Second, one of the most important roles of an MP is to advocate on behalf of her constituents and to advocate effectively. It's an art and there's a science to it. And as I mentioned, the work experiences and the volunteer work that I've done, whether it was advocating for women and girls of Afghanistan or better mental health outcomes for students at Trent University, I have the advocacy skills to do that work. And finally, you can talk all you want and you can listen all you want, but unless you can bring people together for a united effort on common ground, things don't get done. And I've demonstrated the ability to do that time and time and again. I did that with the mayor's race. I did that with the successful bid for uh, the liberal nomination. It's happening right now with this incredible campaign we're running with hundreds of volunteers and supporters. I have the ability to bring people together. And that's what this community needs. And frankly, that's what Canadians deserve. Well, that leads in very nicely to the next question that I'm asking all candidates to get to know a bit about more about the political process. So tell us a bit about your campaign team, how that team was put together, um, and was it locally driven or is there input from the National Party? What's, what's been your experience with that? And I know there was a big announcement, you have a big team, lots of recognizable names, but how did that process take place? I have a solid team and let me take this opportunity to thank them from the bottom of my heart because they inspire me and motivate me every day and in the midst of the longest election in modern Canadian history, I can tell you that having them around has made a world of difference. The people that I have on board are community leaders. Some of them have been with me since the mayor's race and they continue to walk with me shoulder to shoulder. Others have been mentors for years and years and having them uh, provide input and guidance, uh, it's incredibly valuable. And then there are the people that I wouldn't have met had it not been for this campaign. People from all walks of life, from different age groups. The youngest volunteer on my team is 10 years old, Jay. And people who 
share a common vision that a better Peterborough and a better Canada is possible and that the Liberals are offering the best progressive alternative in this election. Now, ma'am, you, you, um, you mentioned the mayor's race, so you had, uh, I, I guess, your first uh, official electoral experience about a year ago when you had a, a great run to be the mayor of Peterborough and came in a close second. Have you found that um, people that supported you then, now it's a different ball game when you get into provincial mm -hmm. or, or federal politics, mm -hmm. um, although some people might argue that uh, you know there are party politics locally uh, people tend to put that aside more so than they do obviously with uh, with higher level uh, did people automatically come over or was there a bit of a fall off of people that are dedicated to parties other than the liberal party that might have been working on your campaign yep so 9879 people came out last october and that's just the city of peterborough too and that's just yes. the city of peterborough sir <laughs> right. and they shared my vision for a more progressive Peterborough and they invested their confidence and their hopes and their dreams onto me and that changed my life and in many ways I believe that it changed the landscape in politics in this community. It worked because we pitched a big wide tent and everyone was welcome and everyone is welcome now. What I'm seeing now is that there are people across party lines who are finding that the liberal message resonates with them. They're finding that I'm still the same me, that I have the same values. What I'm advocating for is a better future for our kids and our grandkids and that hasn't changed. Of course the nature of the beast as you mentioned is that party politics sometimes force people to choose a side and that's okay. That That is perfectly okay. It's the sign of a healthy democracy but what I hope that people will continue to believe is that I'm still the same me. I'm just a little bit stronger with thousands more people standing beside me than I thought were there when I first began the mayor's race. Okay. Hey, um, one of the things I wanted to ask about was uh, you went through a nomination process. Mm -hmm. I, I believe there are four other people. Three other. Three other people. Uh, how does it work in your campaign? Are those people now working with your campaign? Do you have support from those folks or have they moved on to different things? How is it working within your party? locally? There were three very strong candidates in this race and what we were able to do was genuine service to the Liberal brand here in our riding. We grew the membership. There, there were nearly 3,000 members within the Liberal Party uh, at the nomination meeting. About, I think I remember this exact number, 1,561 people voted and that's a sign of a healthy party in this community and that can be contributed to the hard work and the strong work ethic of those three other candidates. And ultimately, we all want a change in this country. It's the Liberal Party that's providing that change and I'm fortunate to continue to have the support of those three very strong community leaders as we move closer and closer towards changing uh, the landscape in politics federally in this country. So one of the things I, I, I think people recall from my, your previous campaign, and maybe early in this one, was you, you talked about wanting to do politics differently. Mm -hmm. Now you're in a party format, and you've had some leaders of the party that are, have been doing it a long time involved in your campaign. I think Ralph Goodall was through town a, a while back. Can you realistically do politics differently if you're the next mm -hmm. MP? for Peterborough Kawartha, or the first MP for Peterborough Kawartha. Can you really do politics differently if you go to Ottawa? Jay, the desire to do politics differently isn't something that I came up with. It's a requirement that the doors I'm knocking on, the people I'm hearing from, it's what they expect. To do things differently means putting integrity and results first and yes I can realistically do that and I will not knowingly make promises I can't keep. I will not try to take advantage of my position for personal gain. Uh, that's part of doing politics differently. Ultimately though doing politics differently is about putting people at the heart of what we do. It's about engaging with them one-on-one -on -one and being open to respectful and open dialogue. It's why I'm proposing to host a job summit within 90 days of being elected so that stakeholders can come together and we can determine what 
federal initiatives make most sense for this community. It's why I'm going to have a constituency office uh, traveling across the county to the different areas of our rural riding so that the people who are not within the city center can have access and representation. That's doing politics differently and it can be done. It needs to be done, frankly, and where there's a will, Jay, there is a way and what I'm proud to um, also have is a leader who engages in a different kind of politics. For Justin Trudeau, it's the one-on-one -on -one at the doors that really seems to uh, have shaped his policy platform and it's something that is well included within the culture of the party. Okay. Let me move to uh, about talking about the campaign. You mentioned door to door, and I, I don't know if that's. Uh, you'll hear the question, but I don't know if that's uh, your favorite part of the campaign. I but love what knocking do you enjoy? On doors. Okay. I love knocking on All doors. All right. So let me ask though. What is and, and maybe uh, yeah, maybe it was yeah. a leading question. But what do you enjoy <laughs> most about campaigning? Say if it's not knocking on doors, or tell me how much you like knocking on doors, and what do you like next? So okay, I'm going to tell you that I like knocking okay. on doors best. In fact, right after this, I'm going to change my shoes and go knock on doors. It's one of the only parts of this entire campaign that I have any control over. It's a rare opportunity for anyone to get to know their community in the way that I am. It's an opportunity to look people in the eye and to hear from them what their concerns are and to hear their stories so that when I'm in Ottawa, I can advocate effectively and persuade my colleagues with those stories. It's the best part and frankly, the response that we're getting at the door is a positive one. So that mm -hmm. positive reinforcement is also there. And what are the top uh, issues you hear at the door. So let's say the top two or three issues you hear when you're knocking on the doors of Peter, could, Peterborough and the county. I could ask you to guess, but I think you're interviewing yeah, me. Yeah, that's so. right. You're here to answer the questions. Without <laughs> question, the number one issue at the door is jobs and mm -hmm. the economy. The second one is around the environment and climate change. I'd say the third is around health care and a healthcare system that makes sense for the 21st century and, and integrity, ethics, and doing politics differently. Mm -hmm. It's a theme that has continued to come up at the doors. What would you do about the f jobs uh, and, and economy, for example, you and, and mm -hmm. your party, but you as a, you know, someone, it's a big issue in Peterborough. We've seen mm -hmm. a changing landscape. Um, what would be your first priority for this constituency if you were the uh, next MP for the region on jobs? It's definitely an issue for this riding. Our unemployment rate continues to be one of the highest in the country at over 7%. Last August, uh, this past August, there were 4,900 people looking for work in our riding and couldn't find it. The economy is not growing anymore and that's not good enough. What the Liberal Party has offered is the largest investment in our history and in infrastructure that'll create short-term jobs and invest in the assets that we cherish in this community. That'll create short-term jobs. What they've announced is a tax cut that will put more money in the pockets of Canadians and stimulate the economy. This is good news. Locally, the job summit that I'll be hosting within 90 days is going to be part of the con consultative approach. I'll have a jobs council for the MP so that stakeholders in the community continue to be part of that process. Ultimately, what we do in Peterborough to uh, generate economic growth and sustainable economic growth, as you know, has to be built on our assets. And what we do well here is look at all the things that we cherish about this community. It's Trent University, Fleming College, the Trent Severn Waterway, our vibrant arts and culture sector. We have a tourism industry that could be so much more an agricultural uh, sector that is vibrant with a lot of support. And it's those areas that we need to build upon. And again, I'm fortunate to be running with a party, and I think all of us are, that the Liberal Party's national commitments positions us really well locally to take advantage of those commitments. Okay. So Miriam, you, you mentioned various sectors and it leads mm -hmm. right into my next question. So 
Uh, the day after the election, the new prime minister, and assuming it's a liberal prime minister, starts calling up uh, successful candidates mm -hmm. who are now going to be official members of parliament. And you get a call, what portfolio would you be most interested in serving in as a, as a cabinet minister? Uh, I'd say one step at a time, Jay. <laughs> We're going to the I, top here. So. I intend to, my number one priority, and you're not the first person to ask me this, sir. My number one priority isn't to jump up and move up the ladder here. Mm -hmm. My number one priority is to make sure that this community, this riding, has the representation that it deserves in Ottawa. We have a lot going for us, but there are a lot of gaps and there are a lot of needs and this community deserves a champion. And my number one priority, and I put this in my nomination papers too, Jay, is this riding, my constituents here. So. First things first, I intend to represent this community to the best of my abilities and if I'm worthy of enhancing my commitment and doing more for Canadians, then I will come back on your show, Jay Amer, and we'll have that conversation. Oh, that's good to hear because I think we're trying to get the successful candidate in the next day, so that's, uh, that's good. We have I'll one, bring a lot we of have one commitment, <laughs> yes. Um, so Justin Trudeau has been to Peterborough, I think, twice over the course of the campaign. We've seen other party leaders here. Um, uh, what's your uh, relationship with Justin? I mean, you're a new candidate. He's been a, around a bit. Um, have you been able to establish a sort of a profile with, with uh, your leader? When choosing which party to run with, and it's a very difficult choice, as you can imagine, Jay, I, I needed to run with a leader that had a progressive vision, but also one that I could relate with, so that when I'm in caucus, I could persuade said leader uh, to meet the needs of my constituents. And Justin Trudeau represents generational change. He embodies the reality that doing the same thing the same way is only going to get us the same results and the status quo at this point in our history just won't do. I have a lot of respect for how he's been able to stand up, how he's been able to establish his own um, legitimacy, uh, the way that he's gone about, and I mentioned this earlier, the, the value he puts on the one-on-one -on -one conversations with Canadians. Uh, a cause that's very important to me is mental health and I know that it's something that really matters to him and I really look forward to working with him and the team that he's been able to attract to get quite a few things done like pulling us out of a period of no growth economically, like investing in the well-being or in our, of our seniors so that they can retire with dignity and like addressing issues, working with the provinces, uh, like climate change and mental illness, which is, which is a big concern across this country. And Miriam, the, uh, the other topic we have to talk about in Peterborough, uh, for almost a year, Peterborough didn't have uh, an official MP due to the resignation of Dean Del Mastro and subsequent uh, uh, court finding him guilty of uh, election overspending. Um, has that helped your campaign? Has it having an impact on the campaign at all? The, what happened locally, it's not unique to our riding. It's something that's happening across Canada. And people are aware of the details. I don't need to go into them. But I will say that people are more engaged in the democratic process. We've had, what, six or seven debates now, and every single one, there's been over 100 people at each of these debates with a lot of questions, with a lot of stamina. And I'd say 90% of the faces in those uh, settings has been new faces. And that's encouraging, that's a sign of a healthy democracy and what I'm presenting to the people of this riding is that different way of doing politics, of putting people first, of acting with integrity and being driven by results and practicing an inclusive kind of governance, an accessible one. And come election day, it's up to the individual voter to see if uh, our previous MPs had an impact and hopefully I will have earned the confidence of the people of this riding. Okay. The, um, 
who is one of your main campaign supporters that people might be aware of uh, that you'd like to recognize publicly? Ooh. Can I say my mom? You certainly can. I'm going to say Although my mom. Although not everybody knows your mother. But okay. <laughs> well, my mom was 30 years old when she decided to bring her three daughters around the world to a country where she didn't speak the language of, she didn't understand the culture. She came here as a refugee, knowing full well what was at stake. She came here and she made it, and she instilled in us the desire and the responsibility to make something of our lives. And she put up with three teenage daughters in Canada on her own, and the, the moms and dads out there, they know what I'm talking <laughs> about. And here she is, my number one fan, there for every debate, making really delicious food for our volunteers, making calls, delivering signs, and what I see when, when things slow down enough for me to pay attention, what I see in her is how proud she is that that risk that she took all those years ago and the price she paid for giving up what was familiar and comfortable to come here, what this means for her is it was worth it. And if there's anyone that I could thank right now, it would be her. Very nice. Now, I, I like to ask this question. How many signs have you ordered, and how many are up, if you know that number? Uh, I don't know the exact number. Because we're, we're getting into the sign battles okay. now. It's always curious. So to <laughs> one of the great benefits of having hundreds of volunteers on your right. team is I don't need to know all the details. <laughs> what I know is that there was an email sent out uh, to our volunteers last week thanking them that we have well over 1,200 signs out there across the riding. And uh, the hope is to paint the town red between now and October uh, and mid-October. So. And hey, we're almost out of time, but very quickly. Did, already? Already, yes. Holy you, moly. You mentioned debates or candidates meetings. How many um, do you have left to do on the campaign? I, I first of all, I'll tell you that I was on a call with the other candidates across Ontario, and I'm proud to say that here in Peterborough, Kawartha, we have more debates <laughs> than any other candidate. I believe there's 17 or 18 left. Wow, that's almost one a day, isn't it? Sometimes <laughs> two. <laughs> Miriam, uh, we are uh, delighted to have you in the studio. Uh, the reason I ask that question is because we want to remind our audience that you'll be mm -hmm. back here in the studio October 7th live with the other candidates. We'll have a, a candidate's two-hour uh, debate, a candidate's meeting. Um, and we're very much looking forward to that here on TV Kojiko, we're delighted to have you here and I wish you all the best on the campaign trail and all the best on election day. Thank you so much, Jay. Thanks.